Hello, everyone. I am meteorologist Hutch Johnson. I appreciate you joining me as we review an Arctic blast of air that continues in the northern plains. The cold reach of this air mass all the way down into the deep southeast feels like temperatures show that it's wintry cold all the way down into the Gulf Coast states. And now, as this cold air crosses across the Great Lakes, the lake effect snow machine is cranking up. Now, this system is going to continue its way through. We have another chance of some significant snow as we work our way through the weekend and into next week. Covering all of that, and we're going to take a look at roads and radar right here on Hutch's Weather. Let's get started with a closer look at these brutally cold temperatures. Zooming in just a little bit, you're going to see the Northern Plains has it the worst where you see these blue colors. These are feels like temperatures between 25 and 35 degrees below zero as we head into the evening hours. These wind chill values as we go towards Montreal and out towards upstate New York are in the single digits, so it's brutally cold there as well. Now, as we take a look at the actual air temperatures across the nation right now, we can see that the cold air heading into sunset and beyond has made its way all the way down into southern parts of Kansas. This blue line here where it becomes white is where the freezing line is, so it makes it crystal clear that that freezing air is right through central Missouri, south of Columbia. Down to the south right now, hot springs in Arkansas, they have 50 degrees, Oklahoma City at 50 degrees as well. And it's not hot with air temperatures down in the mid-40s in Jacksonville. Could we see a freeze tonight? You betcha. There's a chance for some mighty cold air. And it's all the way down south toward Juarez. We do have Albuquerque at 43 degrees. And even the uh, normally hot places like Las Vegas, 50 degrees. It's cool there. Flagstaff, a 43 degree night. And even in Phoenix, it's a brisk 72 at this hour. That's a look at temperatures across the nation. Now let's take a look at the radar. We do have the snowflakes flying. There is a batch of snow moving through the uh, Mississippi River Valley and it's streaming across into parts of Indiana right now. These little blue icons are snowfall reports. Not a lot going on in the central part of the United States. As we look out to the west, there's some rain. And we do have these lake effect streams making their way through parts of the uh, Great Lakes region all the way into the New England states. Now, zooming in just a little bit closer to this area near Chicago, Indianapolis, we do have some heavy snow reports in some areas. We're getting three, five inches of snow out there. And the wind is going to be picking up with this cold air blast that's heading its way in. We have lake effect snow bands in the northern reaches of Michigan, Traverse City, and points north. As you're traveling north on Interstate 75, you can expect that. We have a few working off of the eastern shores of Lake Superior near Sault Ste. Marie. Those bands are increasing as well. Here on getting into the action right now, these winds are coming across the lakes as such, and we're seeing the Buffalo uh, heavy band of snow starting to set up, as is the case up near Syracuse as well, where snowfall amounts are a little bit uh, going to be on the ridiculous side and they have been. Let's take a look at some snowfall reports and we'll check out those roads as well. Because when you look at this, it does not look that terrible, but I'm fixing to tell you it's not hard to see as we head into the uh, snowfall uh, reports from across the area the last 24 hours where the action is happening. Here we go. As we look across the nation, notice there's a little bit of snowfall activity in the Black Hills area of South Dakota. About 10 inches of it on the uh, Wyoming side of the border here near Four Corners out there. 10 inches of snow. So some good snow out there in the Black Hills, particularly on the western slopes. Look at this. Let's start with the UP of Michigan. 12.2 inches in Munich. As we look out into the uh, northern part of the UP out here, Twin Lakes, over 14 and a half inches of snow there. Where we see the red dots here in northern Michigan, that's where we have some really redonkulous snowfall amounts. Walloon Lake, 18 inches of shovel trouble, back-breaking work there. So well, there's a lot of snow to, to try to move around. Getting into central Michigan, we have a 19-inch report, five miles east-northeast of Elmira, as northern Michigan. Michigan really seeing the brunt of the snowfall. There's a fair amount of healthy snowfall, upwards of six inches in and around Grand Rapids, Michigan. And as we go off to the east towards Detroit, Lansing, seeing upwards of one to three inches of snow as you get away from the shores of Lake Michigan. Now, let's go check out this. Are you kidding me? Look at New York, Buffalo. We're seeing snowfall totals of two feet and it's still blazing over there. This is East Aurora as we look at 24 and a half inches in 
in West Falls, New York, 29 inches also. Uh, as we zoom in just a little bit closer, how about 30 inches in Orchard Park? Woo wee! They're going to be shoveling out the seats at the football stadium there. Eden, four miles to the northwest, a 31 inch report. So ridiculous snowfall amounts in and around Buffalo. That extends all the way towards Rochester where Scottsville has 9.3 inches of flaky goodness. Now, at least the mosquitoes are not a problem in these areas as we go through the day. Keep that in mind. 15 inches in Star Lake, New York, as the northern portions of New York picking up healthy amounts. Copenhagen with about 10 inches of fluffy goodness working its way there. All right, that's a look at the snowfall reports. Now let's check out what this nonsense has done to area roads, and we'll start out with New York State and Pennsylvania. So let's go to Pennsylvania roads here, the Pennsylvania 511 page. You can get to this, and it's no before you go, folks. Where are the problems at? As we look in on Erie, we're not seeing too much in that particular location as of yet with regards to the snowfall out there. So that's good news there. Roads are reported to be green or seasonable until you get up closer to Buffalo. So checking in on Erie PA, things are not too bad at this particular time. Now let's go to the state of New York 511 and let's check this out. Now, where you see the red roads, this is severe weather that is working its way through. And it's really the, the roads very much impacted by the snow that's falling. So we're looking at areas near Sardak Lake as we push up into Beauville and also up into that uh, Buffalo area. So this is the areas where we have the greatest impacts. Let's take a look at a couple of the cameras as we zoom in onto these areas here, let's look at Adams. Adams picking up some healthy amounts of snow. Here's what it looks like out there at this particular time. So if you are traveling, you wanna be extra cautious out here with these heavy amounts of snow. Our DOT crews are doing their best to keep roads open and operable. By the way, there's snow and ice on these pink shaded roads. Green means generally clear and dry. But as we get down into Rochester and Buffalo, let's check this area out here. Taking a look at some of these areas here in Buffalo with reports of three feet of snow or better, a part of 30 inches. Let's take a look at what it looks like in Buffalo right now. There it is. Greasy roads aplenty. Heavy snow. I don't know where they're putting all that snow. Where do you put it? You, you can't put it in your pocket and you can't shovel it back in the lake. That's too hard. So... It gets a little challenging to deal with all the snow. Beautiful lights there at I-190. Thanks so much for uh, for uh, your reports uh, throughout the region here as the snowfall continues in and around the Buffalo area. Now that does extend down to the south just a little bit. Let's go down here towards the Derby area and see what we have going on. That snow definitely piling up on the uh, area near the roads. So Heavy duty snow, lake effect snow taking place out in the eastern United States. How about Wisconsin and Michigan? Let's go ahead and take a look at Wisconsin real quickly. And uh, mainly, we're seeing pretty quiet conditions there uh, with most of the impacts in the far northern reaches of the state. Let me go ahead and uh, uh, sneak up there and see if we can show any details about uh, snow reports up there. Not much of an impact with the ba the basic way this system is working its way through. And Michigan, we know there's impacts on in western Michigan and the UP. So that's a look at this. Now let's take a look, shall we, at our forecast. Our forecast shows that this is not done. The cold air that we have moving through the northern plains is slipping out over the Great Lakes. That's going to keep this flow from northwest to southeast across the lakes, so more snow is going to be likely in these areas. And we're watching a storm system that's going to develop out of the Pacific North Northwest, roll into the Rockies, bringing snow to British Columbia right down through the uh, Cascades of Washington. And then as that system makes its way over the Rocky Mountains, it will deliver another punch of snow to the Great Lakes region, the Northern Plains potentially, and bring some rain chances through the region as well. So let's take a look at the timeline on all of this for you and a quick look at your forecast. We'll look at some snowfall potential moving forward, but here we see the high pressure. This is that cold dome of air moving in out of places like Minnesota, where we have temperatures in the single digits below zero for highs. That's moving off into the northern parts of the Ohio River Valley. That's going to keep that northwest flow through the uh, Friday afternoon time frame for much of uh, the lakes. The eastern shores of the lakes will continue to see lake effect snow through then. Here's a little Colorado wiggle, a little Colorado low that develops here. Showers, thunderstorms down into parts of uh, the hills of Texas, all the way through uh, parts of Missouri, down into Arkansas and snow in southern Minnesota and northern Iowa from that system before it really kind of starts to, to twip, uh, 
to de uh, deform a little bit. It kind of goes away. Here we go with the next system working its way through the central and northern Rockies, bringing chances of snow there. Rain showers across the plains as we go into Monday afternoon and evening with another one on the heels of that. So wintry weather, well, we get a little break. We get some wet weather as well as we head into the deep south, heading into the middle of next week. A very active pattern. How much snow are we talking? Let's go ahead and take you down into the northeast United States. We'll start in the New England states here and we'll take a look at the snowfall potential on this particular model. These are just models. It's model guidance and those ideal areas where these lake effect snow bands set up near Buffalo, near Rochester, will continue as we go through the next 24 hours. So here we go, all the way into the time frame, if you're watching the clock here, of uh, the weekend and Sunday. So it does start to wrap up just a little bit as we get into Friday night and into Saturday with snowfall, additional snowfall of upwards of six to 10 inches of additional snow. Looking on the Canadian side of the border here, we got another solid foot on the uh, shores of uh, Huron out there as well. Now let's sneak over and take a look at the UP of Michigan and that zone uh, for the lake effect snow as this Arctic air mass crosses its way across your region. Expect Western Michigan and the UP of Michigan to pick up some lofty snowfall potential. We'll move this down so you can see the northern shores of the UP may be impacted the greatest as we go through the next 24 hours. And that's about it. The this Because the high pressure system moves by you, your winds will shift and become southerly. That shuts off the lake effect machine for you. We're talking an additional one to five inches of snow across much of the northern reaches of the UP and another one to four inches of snowfall in the western part of the mitten of northern Michigan. Grand Rapids could see another inch or two of snow before it's all said and done. So that's a look at that. Now, as we take a look at the Pacific Northwest, that system that will be working its way into the Northern Rockies as we go a little bit later in the week, it's going to bring some significant snowfall potential to the mountains of Northern California, as well as the Cascades of Washington. Let me move this over so you can get a better feel as we sneak around. So where we see these pink colors here, over eight inches of snow is going to be possible in many areas. And in the elevated terrain, as we get into the uh, uh, Sierra Nevada and northern parts of California, we'll see upwards of a foot or more of snow potentially as we head into the late part of the weekend. The timing on the accumulation of this, it begins on your Friday afternoon and it doesn't stop until we get into the late weekend on Sunday midday. Before it heads off into the mountains of Idaho, there's Boise, there's the elevated terrain as you look on the uh, west side of the base, uh, east side of the basin there rather, and you get into the Tetons of Wyoming, you get some healthy skiing snow there. I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Wintry weather does continue. How low will the temperatures go? We'll take a quick peek of that here on this uh, model as well as we look and focus now on temperatures, not wind chill. So this will help us see who has the best chance at seeing some freezing weather as we go through the night tonight. Here we go. So the colors represent the cold core of air. Let's get back to that USA view here so we can uh, see the diving of the cold air mass, the Arctic air mass south. Watch the blue line and that's the freezing line. So as you look down into the Carolinas, North Carolina, Western South Carolina and the Appalachians, uh, that teens and 20s all the way into parts of West Virginia, there's a sharp cutoff to some 30s. Notice the 30s for temperatures as we start Friday morning all the way south into central parts of Georgia. So if you are in the Atlanta area, frost is going to be a possibility and areas with a freeze cannot be ruled out here and there. Now notice most of Texas rises and shines on your Friday with temperatures in the 50s. So basically we're talking along Interstate 70 through Kansas and Missouri and Colorado and points north having the greatest risk of seeing some really nasty cold air working its way in. All right, I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Thanks for joining me on this edition of Hutch's Weather. Drop a comment. Let me know where you're watching from. You know, you can get the latest on Hutch'sWeather.com. Check it out. Let me know what you think. Follow me on Facebook. Hit the subscribe button right here on YouTube. I appreciate each and every one of you for taking the time to comment and give me a little bit of feedback of what you would like to see on Hutch's Weather next.